Hi guys, thanks for tuning back into the channel. Uh, if you like these videos, please click the like button and also subscribe as well. And that way you'll be uh, notified if you make sure you press the bell icon. You'll be notified of any new videos as and when I get them posted up. So today, hot and sweaty here in the capital and uh, we're doing an easy-ish sort of job, he says. Um, of installing an immersion feed for a immersion. Obviously, that, that would be what you do, fit an immersion feed for immersion. Um, but it's slightly more complicated than just running a straight 2.5 cable out of the normal fuse board. When we get in, I'll show you what the current fuse board is. It's not great, uh, brand-wise. Uh, so I've had to go to the wholesaler. I've just picked up some gear. And I'm having to fit a separate fuse board. I'll explain more when we're in there as to what's what. So, uh, okay, let's get out of this hot and sweaty uh, tin, well, it's not a tin cup, but it's tin, um, and uh, let's get indoors. <laughs> Okay, so we're indoors now. Here is said fuse board. It's actually a brand called ProTech, uh, which is what, um, there we go, ProTech. Uh, tool station sell ProTech. And I went there and because we've basically just got to get this job done today and get it done, uh, sadly and annoyingly, £25 per RCBO, quite an expensive deal that, uh, for rubbish RCBO at that as well. And it's a next day delivery. So I had to go off to my normal wholesaler because that would have been the best option. As you can see, there is one spare way there that I could have used, fitted an RCBO in there and then ran my 2.5 for the immersion up to the uh, 20 amp double pole switch inside the immersion cupboard, uh, the hot cylinder tank cupboard. But of course, uh, with it being next day, having to just be here, get the job done, and get out of here um, and I hadn't seen this fuse board before I remember it because I've been I've worked at this job quite a few times but I knew that the board wasn't like a Wilex or a Hamilton or a Hager or an MK that sort of thing but I didn't know quite what brand of board it was so I was wondering which one would fit but ProTech and obviously as we've got to keep uh, brand alike that was my only option I think wait a day which I can't so I've had to go and get another fuse board instead. So, I know it may look overkill just for one circuit, but we are fitting this Hamilton board. It's a six-way board. Now, the reason why I've had to go with a six-way board is because the normal garage unit only has... When I can lift up this cover, pull all this back. Oh, here we go. So their garage unit that they do, their main switch is only a 63 amp main switch. And given that I'm going to Henry block and go off those tails there to then split for a separate board, given I can't get the RCBO, the only option was to fit a garage unit. But as I say, that's only a 63 amp incomer. And so I've had to go for one of these. There is a YLX 5-way, which of course would have been a tad smaller, uh, but measurements wise I'm okay with this. And this was cheaper, it worked out miles cheaper to get this, one RCBO, five blanks. As I say, I know it's overkill and you'll um, probably kick me in the comments for that, but it's to do it proper. Yes, I could have fitted the 2-way one, but that's only a 63 amp main switch protected by a 100 amp breaker, 100 amp fuse rather. Um, which is not correct. So install this and there you go. At Hamilton brand, I've fitted quite a few because that's what my wholesaler uh, have in stock. They're not too bad. Uh, let me know what your uh, thoughts are about this particular brand of board uh, in the comments below. So <coughs> got the uh, fuse board partly on the wall, just marking it up and measuring up to uh, see where I can fix it now. So just gotta do the measurements, get it all level and straight.
place now, nice and secure. And uh, washers on the screws and uh, stuffing gland for the 25 single uh, single twin and earth cable that will come through for the immersion feed and the three meter tails, two meter tails and the earth uh, out of the uh, meter tail gland up there. So that's all that sorted. So this is where we're at at the moment. The cable, the 2.5 mil cable for the immersion element uh, or to feed the immersion rather is in it's up there clipped and then runs through the joists and runs through that hole there and for drilling that hole we use the milwaukee hole hog i'll do a separate demo on this when i have more time absolutely fantastic bit of kit uh, really good uh, i bought it and it came complete with two five amp hour batteries uh, is like hot knife through butter. It's uh, absolutely fantastic. So we just drilled some holes uh, through the joist with that to enable us to run the 2.5 mil cable. And it just runs up along there and it's clipped. And I've just put a couple of fire clips uh, up there as well, just to uh, comply with the current regulations. So just needs to terminate in the board, the 2.5 uh, live and neutral, or line and neutral, uh, for the pedants out there. CPC is already in the flying earth lead, the functional earth off of the RCBO is in. I have stripped the neutral on the RCBO. I just need to crimp that now, and we'll demonstrate uh, crimping that in a moment. And that's it. Say so these cables just need to go into the top there, neutral and live, and that's fine. And then connect up the other end, and then we can do some testing. So we're at the stage of wiring in the immersion now. So we're using the fantastic Nipex uh, cable slicing tool. Uh, it's the 169501. I'll leave a link in the description below uh, for this, but this is uh, an absolute revelation. I've used it for the first time today since I bought it, and it's a case of where has it been all my life. You just uh, put it in this end here for larger cables. I mean, this is heat proof immersion flex, so and then just pull and strip. That's it. And then for these cables here, I don't know if you can see there, but you've got 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 1.5, 2.5, and 4 mil. So this is 2.5 flex. So put it in there, run it, twist it round a few times, and then just pull. And it's stripped it nice and neatly. Demonstrate that again. 2.5, hold it in, grip, twist a couple of times. And for the earth... Similar thing, and push off, and all nice and neatly done. Okay, so uh, now we need to crimp ferrules onto the immersion flex as it's stranded conductors. So we're using the Knipex crimping tool, specifically 975304. Again, for this one, I will put the... Uh, details in the description below. All you have to do is choose your correct ferrule, place it in, butt it up to the point and crimp and release. And then you have a nice solid crimp on that ferrule and does it in a nice square method. Just do it again on the earth, get the ferrule, crimp, and done. The spring on this Knepex one is very good quality. If you nip over to um, Artisan Electric's channel that he does, which is uh, Tools for Sparks, Tools the number four Sparks, uh, you'll see he does a review of this versus the Perceiver, I think is the name of the one that you can get on Amazon. And uh, you can get a good side-by-side -side comparison 
between the two. But uh, I went for this Nipex one based on his review and particularly what he's mentioned about this spring. But as I say, go over and watch that uh, that video to get a better review. This is just a review of me using the Knipex on this particular occasion. And here we go with the Earth, oh, sorry, the Live rather. And that's it, done. And then all sorted. And so we have nice ferrules on the ends of our immersion flex. And then it's just easy enough to then connect straight in with a nice solid uh, conductor to clip the cable onto and just make it look much more professional and direct and there'll be a good conductor there for the electricity to flow through. Okay so now we're on to testing. The Hanya block is all connected in and all set up and so with this board all the connections are torqued in so we're just doing our PFC so we're now doing our PEFC prospective earth fault current so the clamp is connected to the earth bar and we stick our probe onto the incoming live and we see that the mega too low uh, test uh, leads uh, two leads low current uh, with it set to lpe live permanent earth and there we get a reading of the reading we're looking for at the moment is the one on the top which is 833 amps or 0 0.833 kilo amps. That's the PEFC. So now we need to see what our PSCC is, the prospective short circuit current. So for the test of our PSCC, go across the live and neutral. The mega picks it up. And we wait for the reading to come in. It takes a bit of time. And there we get a reading of 1.09 kA. So that'll be the highest. That's the highest of the two that we got between the PEFC and the PSCC. So that's the reading we have for our PFC, prospective fault current, 1.09 kiloamps. So we've done our RCD test reading, and so cycling through there, half times greater than 1,999 milliseconds, because obviously at half the value it shouldn't trip. At one time, 18.4 on the zero degree part of the sine wave, 28.4 on the 180, then at five times, if you can see that, five times, Zero degree waveform 18.4 and 28.4 at the 180 waveform. Perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. And off we go. So that's it for this job. We are done and finished. It's uh, half past eight now. Uh, it was kind of one of those long ones, but we just had to get it done and all sorted in the day. And obviously, as you could see, because we had to fit an extra consumer unit, it was a bit more drawn out than just uh, adding a circuit into an existing fuse board. But it's done. I'm happy with the test results and that's all sorted out. So as I said at the beginning of this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like, please click the thumbs up. If you enjoy these videos and want to watch more, click the subscribe button and click the little notification bell as well. Got a few exciting little projects possibly coming up in the pipeline. So uh, we can, or rather I can tell you a bit more about them. I just need to have a confirmation email tomorrow and uh, that should be on there. Potentially, by the time I get to edit this video out, uh, the details of that might be in the bottom. So uh, there may be a little uh, PS at the end of this video. Potentially. I'm not promising anything. There may be. Uh, if you do see the little PS, you know it's coming off. 
If not, and it's not in the description, then uh, it hasn't quite come off just yet. But anyway, never mind. Thank you very much for watching Acer DC Electrics.